I'd like to spend the last few minutes talking about development tools available, whether it's software and IP available, development boards, IDEs, and uh, development tool environments. Chris, could you give us a bit of a background on some of the development tools and tools that an engineer could use? Yeah, so as I mentioned, you know, we have several different uh, you know, MCU families that we apply to motor control, right? We have a, this base of legacy kind of software knowledge that we built up uh, with our C2000 family. We've, over the last few years at TI, introduced low voltage uh, integrated motor drivers. So we now have all these kind of pieces. And so what we started a couple years ago was trying to make some smart decisions up front of how do we make this more flexible? How do we make our jobs easier? And then how do we allow a customer to use the tooling that we're, we're going to build to choose the right solution for them? So we've come up with this concept of, of drive boards and control cards. So we started these control cards concepts. You can see it's a, a DIM form factor from an old uh, SRAM from PC memory. It's that form factor, and we put an MCU with all the, the, the uh, life support, basically, that we need on it. So any MCU family we want to apply to Power Electronics, we put them on these types of boards. We started this about five years ago. And uh, to date, we've you know, put out a lot of different versions of Piccolo and Delfino and other C2000 products. And we are now launching, uh, we launched a Stellaris project last year on a control card. And now at the end of this month, we're coming out with control cards for our Hercules safety controllers, our Stellaris LM4F floating point M4F controllers, and our MSP430 line all being applied on the motor kits. And so we can take any of those control cards and we can apply them to different, basically, drive boards or power stages. So we have a three-phase uh, inverter here, a low voltage, 50-volt uh, low current. We've got a 60-volt, 60-amp higher current. And of course, we have high-voltage kits as well. And so our concept here is modularity. Modular drive boards, modular digital control cards, and then we want the same sort of modularity when it comes to software development. So we're actually just releasing with these kits at the end of this month, something that we call Motorware. And this is a holistic approach to applying you know, the 20 years of TI motor control expertise across our solution and making it plug and play, just like we're doing with the hardware, doing with the software. Right? So we have a nice modular format for everything, um, all the MCUs that we're, we're providing, run off of the exact same directory structure, run off of the exact same main.c type of code, and we've abstracted away using object-oriented coding standards um, all of the different peripheral access for drivers as well as all the motor control libraries. So everything is this very nice, easy-to-use object-oriented API. That's what anyone who's doing software wants to see. And the way that we've applied it makes it very quick to take a solution that's running on one thing and go reuse it on something else. Right, so we're getting portability and reuse and everything that we're doing. Um, and then that goes to the next layer above. The core software is what kind of development tool? TI, of course, has our own co-composer studio development tool. This is how we do all of our, you know, C coding, uh, debugging, compiling, build, and this runs across all of our MCU families. So you're able to, to work off of any MCU one off of the same development environment. Off of a modular control card, a modular modular drive stage using our motorware software, and it's it's really a way for us to be highly efficient at what we're doing, and then let you be efficient and reuse all the great things that we come up with. Ritesh, can you give us an overview of the uh, software and hardware tools available for engineers from Genesis? Sure. So uh, as uh, Chris mentioned, I think uh, what what we are doing exactly. Uh, uh, same things to achieve, but a little bit different angle. So uh, there was a there was a lot of uh, uh, real world scenario where we have been visiting the customer who are trying to bring the motor control in house, and especially this big appliance manufacturer. And they said, "Hey, show me that how you can spin this motor. Show me the your algorithm that you can bring your your system and and show me how you can do this in in five minutes." So we, in, in early, we were going to all this board and the wire and all kind of stuff, basically. And, and, and they were just, it would take like half a day to set up in the lab and all kind of stuff. What we're trying to do that, okay, after that, we have developed this, uh, this entire motor control in a box. We call the motor control, I'm not sure whether you can see it, we can see, send you later on the whole kit and you can. So this motor control kit is based on RX62T. 
and that comes with all the, the, the hardware over here. It also has a motor inside. It has, also has the, the on-chip debugger over here and also the, the, the CD that has entire uh, uh, the software package. And that software, I mean, you can, if anybody can open this box, then again, I'm just, just trying to show you that how, how, how we have this box and package over here. I don't have a setup like Chris had that done over here. And it, it just, just come up with everything in a box. So when we show this to, to customer and say, yep, let's take a look, which other one do you want to run? Vector control, brushless DC, foreign magnet AC, or trapezoidal, whatever you want to run it. Is everything over here, let me show you. And then here's, there's a whole GUI where you can turn or uh, tune the motor parameter and, and look at that how it performs. So, so that was the one attempt where anybody who really looking at motor control first time can get from us. And this kit is now available online. Anybody can request it from us or from our salespeople. And we are putting it into the DigiKey channel as well to buy it. Uh, it's around $400, $500 basically. Now there's another thing that we try to do that, okay, instead of, so, so now next step, customer said, yeah, everything is good, looking good, you can drive it. Now I, I need to, to run my motor in this high voltage environment. Then as Chris mentioned, we have a model approach, we have a high voltage board and that any micro can plug into that one. Uh, so if you want a 62G or any other 600 family, or you can go to a stage family, so that high voltage board will take all the plug-in and customer can run the same algorithm. The third attempt we have done that, which is really unique in a sense, this is another uh, very simple uh, kit. We call RX uh, RDK, uh, Renaissance Development Kit, which, is, which not only demonstrate the motor control, but it also demonstrates a lot of other feature, the connectivity, the, 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 the TCP IP, the USB, and, and the RTOS implemented, everything else, because these guys are not doing only motor control, they must be doing some connectivity as well. So we replicated the motor control over here. If you see, I'm trying to pinpoint over here, this LEDs, circles, they actually, uh, I can just make it a little bit clearer, uh, this area, this is actually emulate the whole motor control. So the same algorithm that you are running, uh, instead of having a motor onto the board, uh, but you can get exact same performance with the, on the GUI and, and see that how the motor is running. So this is for the entry level people who really are looking at first time uh, exposure to Renaissance architecture or RX architecture, uh, to the matter of fact. So that's what the step we have done, uh, the entry level people who are looking at to, to evaluate, that's the one. The people who are already familiar with the motor control, but they want to really see in action, that's a motor control kit. And a third level is a modular kit, which uh, which people really want to run their own motor. And then all the algorithms uh, are available on the website. People can go and 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 download by just simple registration. And and and, and I think they can start right on there. I, I want to address the the safety comment just because I don't think I I got my taken there. Uh, we're we're okay. doing very similar things in the safety, especially when it comes to appliance, uh, IEC 6730, kind of the de facto standard and how that's applied either at UL or at you know, CE levels in Europe. Um, we're doing similar things, offering IEC 6730 libraries, both for Stellaris and for Piccolo. Um, it's, it's helping people pass compliance checks to test one, make sure that their hardware is good, make sure their peripherals good, make sure their software, their memory hasn't gone off in the weeds. And then making sure that you handle PWMs correctly so you're not blowing up a power stage, right? That's really what it's about. Or, of course, uh, addressing those needs in the market. And, and, and from our side, actually, uh, to, to just elaborate a safety thing, uh, it's a very big topic, uh, Cody, right now. And, in fact, it's, it's a pretty, uh, uh, pretty dominant discussion whenever we talk to the appliance manufacturer these days. Now, they're talking about that how you can add these safety functions to hardware. For example, adding the CRC check into the hardware, um, the offering the independent watchdog timers, offering the clock step detect functionalities. Uh, these are, were, were not in the, in the, in the beginning IC60730 spec, uh, but now they're adding those things. And in fact, uh, it, it is so surprising that the most of our controller, they do have all those features in the built-in as a hardware. 
So we are almost ready. And, and most of the time when people look at those hardware features that you do have a CRC, you have a RAM parity check, you do have the clock stop detect functionality. That's a very much added plus for them because they don't need to put external components or kit read in order to achieve those features. So I think the safety is a big feature and, and I agree with the Chris, uh, uh, everybody's trying to address with the, with the software compliance perspective, but we are adding now the hardware as well and all the RX devices do have those hardware features built into them. Yeah, absolutely. You okay. really can't pass the IE6730 with software alone. You have to have dual clocks. You know, having a CRC, we actually have a, a special engine on our Piccolo family that handles all that independently. All those things just make it easier. But when I think of these things, it's these are all kind of table stakes. You know, floating points about to be table stakes. Having an IEC 6730 easy certification is going to be table stakes. So what we're really focused on is making sure that we're we're solving the real problem. You know, I'm letting our product line, we're making the MCUs, make sure that we're table stakes plus having differentiated analog having differentiated interconnect in the peripherals to make sure that we're, we're taking advantage of the processor and we're getting most out of our system. And our group from the motor solution side is making sure we're not table stakes, we're advanced, we're far, far ahead of the curve and we're going to stay ahead of the curve. And how we solve customer problems about easily spinning, tuning motors, and then solving the real kind of last 10% as I called it. You know, I think a lot of people are getting close, that are right on our heels of being able to do some of these things that we're doing as far as the instantly spinning that we've been talking about, but what we're finding is the capability to really take the last step, right? The, the very deepest field weakenings and ultra high speeds where your controller can really, you know, the, the issues of your controller are going to come out. Right? The heavy, heavy agitation, right? The, the full torque startup. These are the places where you don't get to in a control system until you're well down the development path. And those are the problems that we're solving, implementing, making easier, getting them straight to the customers so that you know we want to get to the point where this is essentially automated right this stuff should be automated this stuff should be canned this should be adaptable to the situation right and we really want our customers to be able to focus on that next layer how do you take the next layer you know we're excited about solving this problem for them so that they can go solve the next challenges right there's all these sensors in a lot of system not just you know, rotor sensors of the motor, right? There's temperature sensors, there could be flow sensors, torque sensors, you know, all these things. We're not a believer in sensors, right? If we can get rid of a hall sensor for an, an encoder or rotor detection, we think that we can get rid of all these sensors. There's things that we can do with a smarter processor and with more software that's going to allow us to really drive the integration of these systems, right? We're trying to think two, three, five years ahead about the next big challenge and really solving the full system not just the out-of-box experience. Exactly. I, I fully agree. I mean, that's what uh, uh, we're exactly moving towards to really looking ahead as opposed to solving today's problem. And in fact, the couple of uh, major design that we have won is because of that forward-looking thinking, because those, for example, in, in those sensors or, or, or offering some kind of innovative hardware, piece of hardware into that, or putting some state machine, in fact, so the specialized controller, we have put a specialized state machine for a, for a particular controller algorithm. So yes, I agree. Those are the things that are differentiating uh, Renaissance or TI than anybody else in the marketplace. And 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 we we truly represent a a, a motor control centric technology leader. No, I'm glad I'm glad Renaissance is out there. You know, it's Renaissance is the dominant player in the microcontroller space. Everyone knows that. And it's, it's great to have someone, you know, we feel like we're the underdog, even though we come from, you know, being a leader in the high-end motor control space, we feel like we're an underdog in the appliance space, an underdog in the, you know, the, the, the small motors moving up to high technology. And so we like that there's other people who are passionate about motors like Renaissance out there. And uh, so we're coming for you. Absolutely. <laughs> Looking forward to that. And it, it, it was a very interesting and challenging challenging battle that we would like to really enjoy and and as you mentioned that we have been definitely uh, dominant the appliance market and it's, it's still dominant for, but we are not we really not want to be complacent and, and really looking forward for the five years or, or ten years from now it's been great having you both on here I really appreciate it. it's been a wonderful discussion and uh, we uh, look forward to see how the market changes over the next few years the, the technology you guys are developing uh, is cutting edge and uh, Anyway, discussion's been great. So.